So um, yeah, it gives me great pleasure to um, welcome our next speaker, uh, Edmund Neo. Um, so Edmund is my colleague based in Singapore, and he's our immunology sales specialist out there, uh, representing us for the Asia Pacific region. Um, Edmund graduated from the National University of Singapore, and he worked with Abbott Labs before joining ProImmune a couple of years ago, uh, just before the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. So he's been somewhat immersed in, in this sort of technology and thinking about COVID immune responses for, for a couple of years. Um, he's been, been playing a really pivotal role in the company by expanding our business in that region. And uh, it's a great pleasure to, to have Edmund speak to us today. I hope you very much enjoy his talk. He's gonna be talking to us about epitope identification and clinical immune monitoring tools. So over to you, Edmund. Thanks, Jeremy, for the introduction. Really excited to be here, you know, in this meeting again and seeing many wonderful spaces around the world. You know, we have been missing traveling so much and it's nice to see everybody coming from different areas and coming to this meeting and seeing each other's face and hope we can see, hopefully you can see each other if physical in, in the future soon, soon to be, I think. And of course, to learn about the latest advancement in SARS-CoV-2 research from these experts today. And later on, we have the second part. So if you do not want to miss out, right, be sure to stay with us all the way for the second part of the meeting. So for those um, that were not with us earlier, so I would like just to take this chance to introduce about ProImmune again. So we are, ex we are your strategic partner that enables you to fully characterize both the wanted and unwanted immune responses using our state-of-the-art proprietary technologies. We are the world leader in providing products and services for preclinical and clinical immunology research for more than 20 years. We are serving almost all the expert immunology academic groups, large biotech, and the top 10 pharmaceutical companies as listed in this slide here. So just some publicly disclosed institutes and organization that we are working with. And here you can find some of the publicly disclosed um, um, organization that we are working with, ranging from characterizing antigen-specific T cell responses to screening immunogenicity in biotherapeutic programs. So at the very, very bottom left of your screen, so this is a picture of um, the Magdalen Center building in Oxford, UK, where ProImmune's offices and lab operations are located. We also have sales team located in US and Singapore, which this is where I'm located at. We are most certainly happy, you know, that um, if you are nearby some, some days and then we are more than happy to drop by and then you have a chat with you and face, uh, meet you face to face. So before I start introducing about ProImmune's technologies, what we can offer, it is important to first discuss about the relation between peptide antigen specific T cell and the MHC molecule using this simplified cartoon. The MHC molecules are generally classified into the MHC class 1 as shown on the left and class 2 on the right. Here we have antigen presenting cells which process protein through proteasomal cleavage pathway that expresses peptide antigen on average about a nine-mer peptide usually, represented by the orange diamond loaded on the MHC class 1 on your left. The other pathway is through endosomal cleavage pathway that expresses peptide antigen, usually on average a 15 mer peptide, represented by the red diamond loaded on the MHC class 2 on your right. Yeah. T cell then recognizes the peptide antigen loaded on the MHC molecules through their T cell receptor. The, the antigen specific CD8 T cell recognizes the MHC class 1 antigen, while the antigen specific CD4 T cell recognizes the MHC class 2 antigen. Peptide antigens that are presented on MHC and recognized by T cells are also known as T cell epitope. Now that we have been introduced to the fundamental of antigen specific T cell responses, the next questions would be what tools are available to evaluate specificity, function, and frequency of immune responses? To assess efficacy of vaccines and immunotherapeutics, whereby in our uh, previous some of our experts and during the discussion, there was a lot of discussion about that on how we can actually do that. And also another question would be, how can we perform in-depth characterization of antigen-specific TCR, such as doing a single cell analysis or looking at various biomarkers? So in the following part of my talk, I'll be sharing about the MHC multimer technologies to enumerate antigen-specific T cells using our Pro5 MHC class 1 pentamers and Pro T2 MHC class 2 tetramers. Also, we will be providing we also provide custom peptide synthesis and also we provide T cell aliceport assay as a service that is performed by our experienced team of immunologists. So in my following slides, you will see QR codes that will pop up um, along, along on my slides. And so if you can, you can get your phone ready and you can scan the QR codes to 
um, either access the recorded talks of our previous past meetings, or you can access to some of the papers um, that I will be discussing um, later on. Alternatively, right, if you don't want to scan the QR codes, my colleague will be posting those links in the check functions to be so you, be, you can um, access them through those links that are put on in the Zoom chat function. So be sure to look out for them. So moving on to the first product, so this is our Pro5 MHC class 1 pentamers used to enumerate antigen-specific CD8 T cells by flow cytometry. So our pentamer is an unparalleled technology cited by experts around the world, even you've seen some of the example today by some of the speakers, shown in many publications in our track record. We have a team of experienced immunologists that can quickly assist you with professional technical advice. We have more than 700 catalog specificities that include more than 30 SARS-CoV-2 specificities today. If you're interested in other research areas, you can find them on our Pentama catalog webpage. If you are not able to find the specificity that you are interested, we can consider providing custom pentamer synthesis for the mouse, human, and the non-human primate LU. By, just by letting us know the peptide sequence and the MHC LU that you want to synthesize them into the pentamer. So some of you all might be familiar with the SARS-CoV-2 work done by Professor Tao and also Dr. Peng. So they were one of the first groups to publish in the early phase of the pandemic in 2020 to address the urgency of having tools to characterize immune responses in COVID-19 infected patients and vaccine treated population. So by working closely with ProImmune, this has enabled their group to rapidly assess large quantities of reliable custom pentamers to perform in-depth analysis of SARS-CoV-2 T-cell responses. In a follow-on study that was published um, this year recently, their group studied on using this B0702 pentamer on antigen-specific T-cell clones and single-cell sequencing sorted by pentamer to assess functional avidity and viral efficacy. Here, moving on to another, another study, done by Professor Shin's group from the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. His group has successfully used this AO201 pentamer to enumerate SARS-CoV-2 specific CD8 T cells in COVID-19 infected patients of different infection profiles, as well as to perform in-depth analysis looking at multiple biomarkers gated on pentamer positive cells shown in these plots below. In his follow-on study, his group did an amazing work on a 10 months time cost analysis monitoring stem cell-like memory T cells in COVID-19 convalescence patients using pentamer. What's going on? Okay. And yes, moving on to the next product. This is our Pro T2 MHC class 2 tetramers used to enumerate antigen specific CD4 T cells by flow cytometry. We have 200 specificities in our catalog that includes more than 20 SARS-CoV-2 specificities today. So if you are working in other, likewise, in other research areas, you also can find them um, on our Tetramer catalog. And if you do not find the specificity that you want, we can consider providing a custom synthesis for the human and mouse LUs that are listed here. And just by letting us know the peptide sequences and the MHC LU that you are interested with. So um, just not only the Tetramer, so we also provide them um, in the bio biotinylated class 2 monomer format, which um, Dr. Um, Jennifer Juno should be quite familiar with, with this, which brings us to the next slide, talking um, briefly about her study. So Dr. Juno definitely did a um, fantastic job discussing about her SARS-CoV-2 work. It was very, very nice to see all those stating data. And I would just like to use this chance to you know, highlight some parts of her work again. So in this study, she has successfully used this DRB1501 tetramer to enumerate SARS-CoV-2 specific CD4 T cells in convalescence patients shown in figure A below, as well as pre and post uninfected vaccinated subjects shown in figure B below. So just not only that, right, just by looking at staining positive data, right, so it's quite important to look at negative, um, negative controls as well. And this study here has probably executed the negative control strategies by using um, different ways of like, for example, staining with HLA mismatch sample, pre-vaccinated pre subjects, and also using the clip-loaded tetramer. So those are very nice examples of performing a negative control, which is perfectly executed in this study. So furthermore, time cost analysis of antigen-specific CD4 T cells was also performed using this same tetramer shown in the figure on your most right of, the, of your screen. Moving on to Professor Tao's work again. 
So she has successfully used these two DRB1501 tetramers to enumerate SARS-CoV-2 specific CD4 T cells in COVID-19 recovered patients shown in these two plots below. She then investigated antiviral activity by examining single cell expression from tetramer sorted T cell lines. This study highlights you know, the unique features of cytotoxic CD4 T cells that use distinct functional pathways, providing preventative and therapeutic opportunities. Next, I'll be talking about T cell alispot assay, which was also um, discussed, um, done by Leo in, in his talk earlier. So this assay is um, very popular in immune monitoring programs for clinical trials, such as in recent months for COVID-19 vaccines. T cell alispot assay has become the assay standard for measuring T cell responses and validating T cell aptos because this method is um, you know, very robust, high reproducible, and also quite sensitive. In an alispot assay, PBMC are incubated overnight with an antigen and the population of cells that recognize the specific antigen will secrete cytokines as a response. Looking on the right-hand side of this slide um, with, the, with the diagram, so from top to bottom, this cytokine secreted will be captured in the assay using biotinylated anti-cytokine antibody and then visualized with a secondary color metric step that will appear as individual spots on a plate where each spot representing a cytokine producing cell within that well. Having an experienced alispot handler, you can detect rare responses as low as one cell per 100,000 with low background and this can be extremely important as the population of these effective memory T cells can be very low. One of the most important considerations that you're thinking of on an alispot assay is the cell quality. It is critical that the cells are processed properly and timely after blood draw and using a robust cryopreservation technique to store those cells. So the Pro-spot T-cell alispot assay that we offer as a service as from our company typically, typically uses a 90 cell, 96 well plate coated with anti-cytokine capturing antibody and blocked. As a standard, we thaw the cryopreserve PBMC in this assay and add them at 250,000 cells per well. We run each test condition incubated at 37 degrees Celsius in triplicate. So it can be quite a cell intensive assay depending on the number of antigens that you are interested in and also um, those that are involved. The test antigen for stimulation is typically, typically at five micromolar of peptide or peptide pool, where the concentration is per peptide basis regardless of being individual or in a pool. Quality controls that we use um, includes the PHA at 2.5 micrograms per mil and CF Promix peptide pool at 2.5 micromolar, which this peptide pool contains immunodominant T cell epitopes from CMV, EBV, and influenza. And of course, we have the neg negative control, is, which is just only the media alone. So at the end of the incubation, the biotin related anticytokine is added, followed by either avidine alkaline phosphatase or chromogen to develop spot color. So finally, the spots are then counted with an automated alispot plate reader. So moving on, talk, talk about some of the um, examples of alispot assay and also um, us providing those peptides. So this is a study done at the earlier stages of the pandemic for the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine trial. So despite the, the pandemic situation, Proimmune played a key role in supplying the Oxford group with large quantities of custom peptides to get the trial moving and eventually um, allowing the vaccine getting their approval. Those peptides were all 15 mer peptides, spanning the whole spike protein used in the ex vivo interferon gamma alispot assay to enumerate antigen specific T cell functional responses. They have determined the um, spike specific T cell responses peak at day 14 with a median of 856 spot forming cells per million PBMCs. Another study, um, moving on, um, a study done by Dr. Nawamin, who will be speaking right after my talk, so I will just briefly highlight some parts of his study. The purpose of his study was to investigate a suitable alternative reduced dosing strategy to extend population coverage during vaccine shortage. His group performed ex vivo interferon gamma alispot using uh, the S1 spike protein, peptide pools, provided by us to enumerate antigen-specific T-cell functional response at day 14. His data has confirmed that an intramuscular boost with a half dose of mRNA vaccine gave equivalent T-cell response to a full dose delivery of vaccine. So if you want to learn, understand, learn more about his study, so be sure to stick around and learn from the man, man himself, Dr. Naomi, right after my talk. So at the bottom right of this screen, just popped up, 
This showcases ProImmune's extensive experience in performing Alispot assays as a service, ranging from viral to cancer antigens, preclinical to phase three trials, and many other areas too. You may watch this talk by Dr. Priya Siraman um, from Celgene, where she talks through many of these considerations in setting up the Alispot assay with ProImmune for their CAR-T clinical trial. So today, all I have time is only for monitoring wanted immune responses. So in this slide here, you can have a look at the full capability list of what we can offer. And we have other products such as the CD1D and MR1 Petromus, as well as we have services that we offer, um, such as like antigen presentation assay, T-cell proliferation assay, cytokine release assay, and many others looking in the area of unwanted immune responses for biotherapeutic programs. So if you're interested to find out more, so, uh, feel free to contact us and we are more than happy to schedule another time to have a chat with you in much more details of some of our products and services. In summary, for a successful epitope discovery and immune monitoring program, this requires detailed and efficient characterization of antigen-specific T-cell epitopes for immune monitoring program. So in order to achieve this, it is important to have access to a wide range of tools such as the MHC multimer technologies, the peptides, to enable appropriate and rapid decision making. So ProImmune is the world leader in providing MHC multimer both class one and class two for more than 20 years as evidenced by our customer extensive publication record. We have the breadth of experience um, and integrated platforms that allows you to save time, money, and reduce overall project risk. Last but not least, ProImmune's brings together a diverse range of scientists like, like what we did today. We've shared interest and mixed recorded talks by experts available to the public for free. So you may scan the QR code, um, click into the link and, um, or click into the link in the chat function to watch all our previous talks of our past conferences. And of course, today's meeting will be made available soon after today once we post them in the public. And we will, yeah, you can find them online. So I will end my talk here by leaving ProImmune's contact details. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email or drop us a phone call and we are more than happy to have a chat to find out how we can assist you. So thank you for your attention. Now I'll pass back the time to Jeremy to, for us to carry on with the second part of the meeting, which is very exciting. <laughs> Great, thank you very much, Edmund. Much appreciated. And thanks for giving us that outline there as well.